everyone and welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to be doing a, uh, a lamb shoulder here. I'm uh, going to be cooking that low and slow in the drum smoker. Get that all smoked up and make some pulled lamb. Uh, so we're going to start off uh, using a binder, just using some Dijon uh, mustard. You can also use honey mustard or normal mustard or olive oil at this stage. Uh, just to use a binder to uh, get the rubs on. Then we're going to be doing a base coat of Butcher's Axe Woodlands. Followed up by a coat of Butcher's Axe Hunter. And then sourcing it using Heavenly Hell Lamb Almighty. So we'll get this trimmed up now and get it put in the fridge and then start to cook a bit later on tonight. Alright, so I've just sharpened up my knife uh, using the Victorinox 6 inch boning knife now. And just get all the silver skin and uh, hard fat off. So we'll get all that taken off and then we can get it uh, rubbed down. Alright, so the reason I'm taking off this fat is as you can see, it's quite thick um, and that won't render through the cook. It's just going to be on the surface and all it's going to do is prevent that rub from hitting the meat and the smoke as well. So we'll get all that off, uh, get it trimmed down. As you can see, the meat's starting to get exposed now. Uh, so I'll keep trimming it and get it down to a point where I'm happy. So we've got this all trimmed down now, uh, to a point where I'm happy with it. There is still a little bit of fat on there, um, but it's not really thick, so it should render down through the cork, and it's not going to impair the, the smoke or bite or the rub getting onto the meat there. So um, we'll get this rubbed down now. So we'll start off with the base coat of the mustard as a binder, and then move on to the rubs from there. This isn't a common cut uh, around the world, um, you know, particularly in America where barbecue is so big because it's just so expensive over there, whereas it's more affordable and more popular in Australia. So this is our take on how I would do it. All right, so I'll get the binder on. All right, now we'll get it rubbed down. So stop. Alright, so we're going to start off with our base layer with Butcher's Axe Woodlands, which is a wild garlic uh, type rub. So we'll get that on as our base coat first off. And then next up, this is probably one of my favourite lamb rubs. I've got heaps of them. Uh, it's a very close second to our game face from Bulldozer Barbecue. But this one here is Hunter, which is another Australian rub for lamb and game meat. So. We'll let this guy have a little bit of a sleep in the fridge now, and then we'll still fire up, fire up the smoker shortly. All right, so we're back at the shack. It's a freezing cold night here in Adelaide, so we won't stay out here too long at this stage, but we're gonna run through what we're gonna be using today for this cook. So I've uh, got the Olive Pipco briquettes again. They're my favorite to use, so I'll be using those again. You can use whatever brand you like, or lump charcoal. Lump charcoal is just a bit harder to keep control of the temperature because it can have flare ups as it's not as even as a briquette. Got our tumbleweed firelighters. Michelangelo's here for the party. Got our olive wood from uh, Smoking Log Co. here. That pairs really well with lamb. But I also like to add in a little bit of uh, Mike's or Smoking Log Co.'s aged port barrel as well. So it gives it a bit of a different depth of flavour. Then we'll be spritzing it down with water, apple cider vinegar and Worcestershire sauce. We've got our Inkbird uh, thermometer here and our probe thermometer as well, just to check that once it's getting closer to being done. So we'll get our olive pips lit up now, and then uh, get started on lighting the smoker up and getting it up to temperature. All right, so we've got our two fire lighters lit there. We've got about half a chimney of olive pip 
free cats you may not be able to see that because it is pretty dark outside but we'll get those on and you'll see soon enough when they're all ash over how many i've got in there but about half in the chimney's worth so I'll let that catch a light and um, we'll come back out in a sec all right so we're back at the shack the olive pips are uh have all caught a light and they're all ashed over so we'll get that into the uh, drum smoker now and get that all lit up so i've cleaned up the ash pan from the last cook and now I'm going to get these in onto the fresh lot of pips in the in the drum here, into one corner. and then we'll get our smoking wood on. All right, so like I was saying before, I'm gonna be using two different woods today. Uh, so I'm gonna be using olive wood, which pairs really nicely with lamb, and also gonna be using uh, some aged vintage port barrel. So this is quite a large chunk. I'm only gonna be using three chunks in this. I'd usually use four, but because of the size of this one, there's no need to put two in. So I'll get those set up in the, in the, uh, in the drum here. And as you can see, I'm not sure whether you've seen that before, but on this wood, you can actually see that port has penetrated through the timber. So that'll give off a nice flavor through there. And you can actually smell the, uh, like a winey type smell as it's cooking as well. So we'll get those in and put those right onto the coals now, cause we've got a fair few in here that are lit up. And what we're gonna do as well is we're gonna open up our intake vent wide open and do the same with the top and we'll start reassembling the smoker. So we'll put in our heat deflector plate. We'll also put in our bottom rack. And you can see already that smoke starting to come out. Our tray, just to catch all those drippings, this is an old tray. I'm obviously not going to use it to put any meat in or anything like that, but I'm just reusing it rather than just throwing it out after one use. And our top tray, the top rack rather, the centre section, our ambient temperature probe, and we'll close the lid and let it heat up. And open up that top vent as well. So we've let the smoker come up to temperature now. We're sitting on 200 degrees. That rub has uh, set in nicely, and as you can see, there's a little bit of moisture starting to pull up in there as well. Uh, so we're gonna get this onto the smoker now. Now the smoke's all cleaned up, and uh, get the smoke shack lit, as the young kids would say. So we'll get our lamb shoulder in now, onto our top rack. Put it in that way. And we'll also put in our meat thermometer at this stage too, and I always do this in the thickest part of the cut, trying to avoid bones. So that's in, we'll plug that in. And now we'll get it closed up and let it cook for the night. And what I'm gonna do now as well is just dial back the intake vent, probably to about a quarter of the way open. It is a pretty cold night, so I'll adjust this as I need to but I'd leave it at a quarter and keep that top vent wide open just to let that smoke keep rolling through. But we'll come back in a little bit, check on it, and see how it's looking. Okay, so it's been on for about an hour, hour and a half now. Uh, we'll just check it, see how it's looking, and then uh, spritz it as it needs it. So as we can see, that bark's starting to form now. It's a few little wet spots still, but what we'll do is we'll get it spritzed down, and we'll come back and check this every hour now. So like I was saying before, this uh, spritz that I'm using is 50% um, water, 30% apple cider vinegar, and 20% Worcestershire. But we'll close it back up now and let it keep rolling on in the smoke. All right, so it's 20 past 10 at night. Uh, this has been on for a few hours now. So we'll just have a quick look and give it another spray down. Uh, we're sitting currently on 125 Fahrenheit on the meat, and then we'll get it wrapped up at 165. 
but we'll leave it at that for now and then check it on a, a bit later on. Alright, good morning everyone. So it's four o'clock in the morning. It is freezing out here. Uh, wind's picked up a bit. It's not raining luckily though. Um, but smoke has reached 165. The meat's reached 165. Smoke has held pretty consistent temperatures considering the weather out here. But what we'll do for now is we'll get this meat off, get it wrapped up in uh, double foil, double lot of valve oil and uh, yeah, keep it cooking through to 205. Alright, so I've got me two layers of alpha oil here ready to go. Uh, I've just put some butter on top and some some of the hunter rub. So I'll just get the lamb onto that now, get it wrapped up and put it back in to finish this cook. Okay, so it's 7.30 in the morning now. Uh, someone had a little bit of a snooze on the couch, uh, but I don't mind lamb going a bit over 205 degrees Fahrenheit anyway. So I'll open it up. Check with the probe thermometer to see how the temperature and the feel is. More so the feel, so we just want to achieve it feeling like a knife going through warm butter which it certainly does, there's no resistance there, again. Okay, so it's out of the smoker now, uh, I'm just going to open it up and let it steam off for a bit just to stop that cooking process. Just put it into a tray because it's collecting all those uh, juices that it's been cooking in. So I'll just get that wrapped up now. Some heavy duty aluminium foil. I'm going to pop it into an esky, which I've preheated with boiling water for about 15 minutes. I've tipped that out and I'm going to put this in and then cover it with towels. And that should hold in there for about 5 to 6 hours. Nice and snug, and then a couple of towels, clean towels but old towels on top. Okay, so we've let this rest, it's nearly lunchtime, so we'll get it out of the esky now. Get the towels out of here. And that's still really hot, so it's obviously done its job and kept it nice and warm. Alright, the big reveal. I have a sneaky peek first. I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, that bone's just wanting to fall out immediately. All right, so the true test to make sure this is tender is these bones should fall out clean. Doesn't get much cleaner than that. So this uh, shoulder, lamb shoulder, 
I got this from a very good mate of mine, Dan, up at Sterling Variety Meats. Bit of a trek up through the hills, but in winter it's pretty glorious um, scenery on the way up there. And it's well worth the travel when you're getting meat like this. Okay, so we've got that all pulled down now. I'm just going to get it sourced with Heavenly Hell Lamb Almighty. And this adds... I don't know exactly what it's got in it to make up this flavour profile, but there's definitely Worcestershire sauce. It's almost got like a Branston fruit chutney sort of a flavour to it as well. A bit of sweetness, and there's obviously some mint in there which pairs up nicely with lamb. So I'll get that all mixed through. There's some bigger chunks in there, I want to leave it like that as well. That's all mixed through. You can see that smoke red hue on some of those pieces that have been closer to the uh, outside of the cup. Looks and smells absolutely fantastic. And I've got a little friend here that needs to sample it. See you, bottom. Good girl. I think she likes it too. Alright, so with this lamb, we can use this in heaps of different ways. We've done countless things with it. One that comes to mind is like a, a pizza with barbecue sauce, red onion, feta cheese, olives, anchovies, if you like anchovies. We've pulled lamb on top, do urosses, we've done wraps, do tacos with it. So there's heaps of different ways you can use this. I've even, like if I've had a big cook up and we've got heaps in the freezer that I want to use up, I'll even put it into a shepherd's pie or make little pies, something like that. Um, but we'll get this all onto a serving board now and we'll have a bit of a try. Alright guys, so that's a wrap. Uh, got it all on our serving board here. You can pretty much serve it like this in the middle of the table uh, for guests, which is probably what we're going to do next weekend with the majority of this. We've got people coming over for their birthday to celebrate, uh, which we'll show you probably next weekend. But we'll have a little bit of a taste test here now. And see what we think. Okay, so you get that smokiness from the olive wood and that um, you get sort of like a winey flavour from those uh, port barrel chunks that we used. Bit of saltiness, bit of earthiness from that woodlands rub I think more so. Very herbaceous through the, um, through the hunter rub and a bit of coffee notes there as well. And with that sauce on top, it just moulds it all together uh, with that mintiness, sweetness. Lamb's a pretty gamey type of uh, meat, is probably my best description. It's a bit sweet, um, very, um, yeah, very good cook this one. Very happy with how this turned out. But we'll get majority of this cry back down, put it in the freezer, and then we can use it again at a later date. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked the, the video, and please subscribe if you, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing. Cheers, have a great weekend.